what is criticality analysis? Now, if you're unclear, if you're not familiar with this, there are webinars on our website and um, or, you know, on uh, Mobius Connect and even YouTube, I believe, although they might be a little bit old now. The key is to combine three pieces of information to look at your assets one after another and say, what would happen if the equipment failed? Are lives at risk? Is downtime at risk? But is it a is it an hour of downtime or a month of downtime? Uh, could there be harm to the environment? Could quality be affected? Could we poison our customers? Could we, you know, like what could happen? Um, the next question is, what is the likelihood of that occurring? Because we we could say that one of the consequences is uh, a fatality, which of course is terrible. But we might say, well, the likelihood of the failure occurring is very, very, very rare. It's just so unlikely to happen in that way. But we may look at the consequences of failure, look at the likelihood of failure. How likely is it to begin to fail? But then the third part, which people don't always look at, is what is the likelihood of detection? In other words, I might have a piece of equipment that is unreliable, and I might say, well, the likelihood of it beginning to fail is reasonably high. You know, this particular motor or this, uh, you know, whatever the piece of equipment is, um, is prone to failure. However, because we have condition monitoring or because it always makes uh, a, a lot of noise well before it fails, we will detect that that's happening and therefore we do not suffer the consequences. Now, this is a big topic. I, you know, it's one of my favorite topics. I could talk about it for a long time. But I guess the important point for now is that if we are able to stand back at some distance and look at the asset as a whole and just say what now remember there are lots of different ways a piece of equipment f could fail I mean take an electric motor the rotor bars could break you know could crack and fail the bearings might fail the the uh, rotor may be out of balance it could you know, the rotor might rub against the stator I mean there's lots of different ways it can fail and the consequences of failure um, and the likelihood of detection could be quite different. The likelihood of it failing because of a bearing fault is, uh, you know, is, has a certain probability of occurring. The probability of the rotor rubbing against the stator might be far less likely. If I was going to perform failure modes, effects, and criticality analysis, I would look at every possible way the equipment could fail and look at the likelihood of, of each one of those failures and the likelihood of detecting each one of those failures, which is terrific, but that is a very time-consuming process. And if we want to get something happening more quickly, then we step way back and we look at the motor as a whole and say, in general terms, what what failure modes, what, what sorts of failures are most likely to occur? What ones do I really need to think about? And what are the consequences of failure? And what is the likelihood of detecting that? And that just lets us say, what sort of risks are we facing? If we determine that certain assets uh, pose severe risks, then we can look at them in much greater detail and go through um, failure mode by failure mode. So, you know, I'm rushing through this a little bit because there's a, a lot we can discuss. But if we can start with a basic criticality analysis, it lets us do a lot more. We can say, well, where should we perform that detailed uh, reliability centered maintenance analysis or failure modes effects and analysis? You know, you know, do I just start with the um, do I go through alphabetically every asset or do I start with the most critical asset and go to the second most critical, the third most critical? I would argue that's a better approach. So we do a bit of criticality analysis first and then we uh, prioritize the RCM or FMEA analysis. But that same criticality analysis tells us which assets we should monitor with our condition monitoring program. We make sure we are 
monitoring those assets that are most critical to us, particularly if they're critical because we do not detect the onset of failure. We can make an asset far less critical if we can detect uh, the failure occurring that, that is beginning to occur and therefore we do not suffer the consequences of failure. But we can prioritize our maintenance tasks and our improvement projects and all kinds of things if we have criticality analysis.